Hi, so today we're out in nature again in this beautiful little spot just near where we live. And we're going to talk about two things to you today. So we'll show you the activity, which actually won't take a very long time to frame up, although it's an activity that um, can take as long or as little time as you like. And you'll see what I mean when once we frame it up. But after that, we're going to talk to you about one other thing. So do hang around after the activity because it's a really important message that we want to share with you. Cool. So hi everybody, welcome to day seven's activity. You remember back seven days ago to day one, we did a nature treasure hunt. Well, this activity lends itself perfectly to leading on from a nature treasure hunt. So we've actually been around, we've done our nature treasure hunt, we found a bag of goodies here. As we've got just it's a lovely bag of goodies. I love these. There's so many different things in there. Wow. <laughs> so just random treasures from nature. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to make some art. We're going to make either a picture, write our name, make a sculpture, make a design, whatever it is that uh, our imagination leads us to making with these natural objects we've found and quite often just looking at them you know once you bring them together perhaps we'll move the plastic bag away so it doesn't clutter our space once once you've got them all together once once they're out you'll notice that kids will often naturally start to put them in different patterns and if they don't it's that's our job as parents right to prompt them to go where do you think this should go or, or start something start making a pattern well, what can we do with different things what can we do with different things like would you like me to hold that that's no, that's a great know. idea so what i'm seeing is is these big leaves that just really want to make something like a heart shape maybe we've got no idea what we're making at this stage we are just simply playing and that's the beauty of it, that, um, that you can just, just play. And one of the great things about, about doing things like this is that our kids are starting to really look for patterns. You know, there's, there's two big leaves and two little leaves. What can I make? Now, the way I put them didn't feel right, and so I'm going to put them this way. And all of a sudden, it's starting to look a little bit like flower petals. It's got a little bit windy, so then I have to get a bit inventive and go, okay, what can I put on top to stop them from blowing away? And these banksia seeds that I'm putting on top are actually becoming like the little stamens wow, of the flower, amazing, right? Becoming something. And then we've got these lovely little silvery, silvery leaves that I think would look beautiful on each side. And again, I noticed that I had two, or two of them, okay? So it's obvious that they should go on either side and then I've got two of these left over so perhaps it goes like this these um, palm fronds have some sharp bits so I've got to look out for that I'm I'm really enjoying lately I find myself in the bush all the time you know plaiting together or twisting together native fibers and playing with native fibers mm. to see what they look like and how they feel and again, plaiting is a great way to learn about patterns, okay, the repetition. You have to, it's like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Right, so there's all sorts of things that, um, that come about from just collecting a whole heap of different things in nature. So we're going to pause it here and work on this a little bit more and come back to you once we've got our finished creation. So here's our creation that Beata and I made from natural objects. When I've done this activity in the past and been gathering objects with kids, it's great to talk about what we're finding, uh, all the different types of things, also recognizing the patterns that, you know, for instance, the patterns of the leaf here in the veins and the leaf, are they similar to patterns in our body? So when we're creating art, what's visually appealing is often the repetition or, the, or, or some sort of patterning. And so by creating art from found objects it really helping kids put together patterns and be creative 
and expressive. Yeah, and, and don't be afraid to explore the third dimension with creativity as well. I've had kids build stick huts and houses. We've created this little bit of an arch over here just to bring it up into the third dimension. So, you know, creating an abs a, a sculpture where in a coastal area there's no clay here, but, you know, if you can find some clay, you can mould clay to shapes and stick natural objects in there. In nature, your imagination is unlimited. There's so many ways you can play. <laughs> okay. So another thing is that we often get messages from parents asking us, how do I get my kids outside? How do I get them to engage? Because they don't want to, because they're on their screen or something else. Um, so here's, here's something that we thought we'd talk about and address, because it is a very common issue, common question. And it all comes back to resistance. Yep. Right. Resistance, inertia is a concept in physics and you can look it up and, and make it a lesson with your kids. Okay, so inertia is a concept where things will stay, remain stationary unless there's an external force applied or an energy is spent, right? Yeah, so if you're getting on a, on a bicycle for instance, those first couple of pedals, you have to apply more force to get the motion going. But once you get things in motion, it's easier and you can just cruise along. That's it. And, and it's our job as parents to be that energy, to Absolutely. give our kids that encouragement to get them outside. It's even our job as adults. You know, some mornings I wake up and I look at the ocean and think, oh, geez, it doesn't look all that good. I don't want to go surfing today. Do I really want to put on that wetsuit to go for a surf? And you know what? If I fight that inertia or, or use my will against that inertia, put the wetsuit on, go out there, I end up having a great time and feeling great for the rest of the day because I've exercised, I've done what I loved, I've been free and in the flow. And you never regret it, right? Never you once. never regret it, not <laughs> once. And that's, that's what I used to do with my kids. So I had an agreement with them that if there was something that I thought was great for them to do, they had to engage in it for a certain amount of time, right? So I would put a time boundary on it, which meant that they were more willing to engage because they knew that there was a limit to the time that they had to engage in it. And past that, it was up to them. Yeah. And what often happened was I'd take them to the beach and uh, we might have already had a big day and I'd say, let's stop at the beach on the way home, right? And I'd say, oh, look, I don't want to go swimming. I'm not even going to put my swimmers on. And I'd say, okay, what I'd like you to do is put your feet in the water for 30 seconds at least. And invariably, every single time, right, <laughs> we'd be there an hour later and I'd be pulling them out of the water. Yeah. Because once they get their feet in, all of a sudden they start to run away from the waves and, and they're in it. It's just getting through that inertia. It is. And yeah. it's, so just remember that we have our own inertia, right? And as parents, it can be so easy sometimes, as Ed was saying, even as adults, it can be so easy for us to, to give in and almost blame our kids for it and say, oh, they don't want to get off the screen. They don't want to do it, right? But often it's actually us that doesn't want to do it. I've, I found that every time that I'd so almost have to make myself go outside and engage in the activity and start doing it for my kids to follow. Yeah. I really love the story you were telling me the other day about how you would do exactly that. You would start to do the painting and you would be painting away and invariably the curiosity of your boys would, what are you doing mum? You know, but that's, yeah. you know, creating the pathway, you know, the parent taking the, the lead, lead yeah. and providing the, 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 that energy to get the the wheels in motion yes so so remember the words resistance it's natural we've all got it and will but it takes will to get past the resistance and it's up to us we need to be the adult that provide that energy that gets our kids out there or our other adults in our lives <laughs> how often do i get you out or you get me out you know when Absolutely. we're feeling a bit sluggish yeah. so um do that for yourselves do that for your kids do it for each other. Allow your kids to encourage you to go out 
and allow yourself to encourage them to get out there and play. Because once you're out there, the play is, is amazing. Yep. It's, it's so energizing, isn't it? Yep. And that's the beautiful thing about it, that more times we do it, the easier it gets because we remember, our body remembers how energizing it was when we went out last time. So get out there, do it, and we'll see you in the next video. And remember to comment about it, your experience. Yep. See you soon. Maybe even some words about how you've overcome resistance, how you've overcome yes. inertia. Yeah. Great one. Share your experience with the others, with us, so that we can benefit from each other's experience.